Well, good morning. Uh, it's nine. Uh, we're going to have a slow crowd today because of, I st was thinking about starting and just doing the bum, 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 you know, the ice, ice baby thing today, but I thought that was too much. <laughs> Um, so we will disperse of that and, uh, but just say that it is coming. The fun weather, I will say I've flipped channels. I've watched all the weather, uh, and all of us, everybody said, don't, you're not going to wake up anything today. It's going to come later today. So, uh, but anyway, I hope, uh, I feel like we're on repeat. This was the same thing as last week of, of stores totally out of everything. Uh, it's, it's fascinating and what how people's buying habits are during uh, apocalyptic ice storms and no snows. But anyway, welcome to South Carolina, right? If you don't like our weather now, wait five minutes and we'll, uh, we'll have something different for you. All right, we got a, I'll hit some high notes this week if there are any. I'm kind of bummed today, to be honest with you. Uh, was excited to get here this morning. Then I read about meatloaf and just, suck the sails, uh, the wind right out of my sails. So um, we'll, we'll do that later. Anyway, let's talk about what happened this week. The weather obviously is the biggest factor uh, because though the, the, the upstate's not going to get much, we're going to get some, the coast will get some. But interestingly enough, most of the stores, a lot of distributors have not been able to refill from last week because of the roads. And so you're seeing a diminished supply chain issues as well uh, in the grocery store. Meat counters are empty. You got to really start thinking about where you're going to shop now. Uh, where can I go that no one else has been? And that is uh, that is a challenge here in Columbia. So anyway, I hope, uh, hope you got your provisions for the next couple of days. But um, I do think we'll see uh, uh, it's going to take a little bit of time for the, the grocery stores and everybody else to, to resupply uh, over the next couple of weeks or two weeks back to back. So um, good luck with that. All right. Biggest, I mean, obviously we, we joked about it a little bit, but between earthquakes and uh, a pandemic and ice storms and I mean, earthquakes, do y'all realize we average 20 earthquakes a year in South Carolina up until the last uh, 50 days or so. Uh, we've already had nine this year. We've had 15 over the last three or four weeks. But uh, if we average 20 a year and we've had nine already in 2022, that, that's kind of crazy. All in the same spot, too, by the way. Um, anyway, COVID, of course, uh, I think we're on the downside of Omicron. It, at least the numbers look like that. But our average seven-day... We're at 19,000 one day this week, 17,000 other days this week. To put it in perspective, I mean, last January, we averaged like 4,000 cases a day. And now we're at 17, 18, 19. We keep breaking records. But um, I'm, I'm hopeful we'll, the next two weeks we'll see a sharp decline uh, in those numbers. Um, the good news is we're not seeing – huge number of fatalities, deaths because of this Omicron. We all know this, but I'm just telling you, 19,301 cases, I think it was yesterday, day four, I mean, just unbelievable. Um, so we're, we're going to deal with uh, this craziness for a little bit longer, but uh, we're, we're seeing the earth move under our feet and mother nature coming down. Um, and, and all this is breeding other bad stuff too. I'm not sure if Rebecca, I hadn't looked on who's here today, but um, Rebecca and Red Cross, but blood shortage, worst we've had in a decade. So if y'all are up for it, roll up your sleeves and give some blood. Um, scary thought in California, uh, a trauma one center had to be put on diversion uh, in California for six hours this week because of lack of blood. So Think about this, if you're getting a car wreck or something happens and you need it and you can't find it, that's a scary place. So uh, we, we need to help out uh, all of our friends that are providing those uh, products to, to uh, our hospitals. Hey um, Carl, if I can jump in really quick. Hey guys, hey. Um, I was hoping Rebecca was gonna be on this call too because 
I don't know if you recall, but she and I connected on one of your coffee with Carl's um, a few months ago, and we landed on a date this past Monday. We hosted a blood drive at my hotel um, over at Graduate Columbia with Rebecca and her staff, and, and people really showed up that we had about 30 folks come in and they were able to collect 24 units of blood. That's great. Um, so yeah, and, and all we had to do was provide space and anyone who came, I let them <clears> order <throat> something from the restaurant. Um, so if, if you have the space or have the staff, you know, we're gonna look at doing it again in May. Um, but shout out to your Coffee with Carl's because that's how we connected on that and we're able to do that in such a time of crisis. Great, well, thanks for doing that, Leanne, that's awesome. So I hope others uh, can, can do something and, and uh, we need to help those, those folks out. Uh, Semi-quiet week this week with the General Assembly. They didn't meet on Tuesday because of the ice in the upstate. Uh, the couple of committees met virtually. Wednesday was the annual State of the State Address. Um, I watched it. I don't remember much of it, but um, anyway, we'll move on. Um, yeah, I'm just kidding. It was, those things are, <sighs> It's hard to stay awake for some of those things. Uh, it really is. And I hate to be rude, but it is. Hey, he most of the stuff that he announced earlier. And so uh, as little teasers for the last three months. So no big surprises in the state of the state, but uh, the pomp and circumstance is always fine. So we got that out of the way. And then, but a couple of things to note, we talked about this a couple last couple of weeks, but um they did. They are tackling the certificate of need in the Senate. They also this week, big news. They put uh, uh, med the medical marijuana legislation. Uh, they call it special order, which means that's the next topic that's got to come up. They can't pass any other stuff until they address uh, the medical marijuana. So, uh, uh, Tom Senator Tom Davis from Buford has been pushing that. Um, Shout out to Chris Trainer. He actually had a funny tweet yesterday. He goes, Tom Davis has been pushing the medical marijuana since a dime bag actually cost a dime. That's funny. That's that's actually funny. So um, anyway, we'll see what happens. They'll and he would know the price how? <laughs> I, I don't I didn't ask. I didn't ask for a follow-up. Uh, some things are best left unknown. Uh, but anyway. We'll see about that. And then the, the biggest- Oh, you have to have full disclosure. I'm sorry, that's just the way things are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, they did pass the uh, congressional maps out of the Senate. A uh, little, little political jockey in there, but uh, I think the House will take it up and pass it. If they don't, if they try to make any amendments, it's going to have to go to a conference committee. And they really are on a short timeline because they fully expect uh, lawsuits to be filed. And again, if y'all remember, filing is in March, so they've got to get that underway. Um, anyway, otherwise, the, the, let me, I don't want to pull up a chart because that'll bore you to tears, but I was, yesterday, the BEA came out with its revenues, um, quarterly revenues, really shocking, actually. Um, we're on pace for, well, we grew this quarter 1.7%, and um, which doesn't sound like a ton, I get it. But if you actually, uh, where did I put it? Anyway, the numbers are huge. And, and we had the biggest budget ever growth last year. Uh, and then sales and use taxes are up. Again, 1.7% when it's $6 billion is a lot of money uh, over anticipated revenues. So that means the economy is, you know, with the rates going up, inflation at an all-time high, spending has not slowed down much. And so it'll be really interesting to see the next quarter. Um, more importantly, if y'all want I mean, the, the tax that they collect at any store that sells alcoholic beverages, so if you go in and buy a mixed drink, for, up 42%. That is nuts. Now, uh, so we know where money is being spent right now. It's back in the hospitality industry. And so that, that's good. Uh, accommodations tax are way up. Um, and so people are, are, are traveling and enjoying themselves. 
but it will be interesting to see what the markets do this quarter um, with global politics going on with Russia. As Rich mentioned earlier, I mean, having good job numbers and investment in economic development is huge. So uh, that certainly will uh, help this economy out. A um, couple of things, and I'll leave it open up for y'all, but um, I was really excited to see this week, USC and Lexington One announced a partnership. Um, it's a dual enrollment for STEM and engineering students. We've had dual enrollment, which I think is one of the most underutilized programs we have in government, but uh, in, in education today. Wonderful programs with, with the technical college system in, in South Carolina with, with, uh, with high schools. This is the first time I've seen uh, a four-year school uh, do it, especially USC. I've not seen them do it before, but uh, I hope uh, that catches fire because I do think as a dad uh, paying two tuitions, <clears throat> uh, I really think dual enrollment is a economical way for kids to get an education, but uh, kudos to them and really pushing the STEM and the in engineering, which is great. Um, we had a great week here at the chamber. A couple things to note. We had a really good day yesterday. We launched our uh, Midlands Business uh, Minority Business Accelerator yesterday with eight companies. Um, really was impressed with the talent that uh, came for that program. And we also had uh, a leadership Columbia Summit yesterday. And I saw Frank on here. For many, uh, much appreciated, Frank. Frank brought his boss to town. And uh, Willie Stewart came in and, and uh, did a great job talking about uh, DE&I, but really uh, his company is, is a great success story. He is a great success story, quite frankly. Uh, and hey, Frank, got my book right here. I hadn't we got, we, it. We, got you, we got you drinking the Kool-Aid, Carl. I like yeah. it. <laughs> uh, I hated to miss it. I, they, they recorded it for me, so I, I look forward to catching the, uh, the, the tape today. Or the video of it today, but really appreciate y'all uh, coming down or Willie coming down and, and speaking today. So Absolutely. thanks for your help on that. Absolutely. It was our pleasure. And uh, like I say, it's, it was a great event put on by the Chamber and Leadership uh, Columbia uh, Alumni Association. And uh, uh, from the morning sessions through the Camp Cole and some of the other things that were discussed, just it was uh, awesome to be a part of. It really, really highlighted the great community we have here in the Midlands for sure. Great. Well, I hope Willie had a good time too. All right, uh, I hit the highlights, uh, I think. What's up, let's see. Uh, yeah, I hit the highlights. What y'all got today? Hey, Ted Creech, quick overview. How many pounds of salt are y'all putting out on the roads today? Well, uh lost count i mean uh, we had uh, i'm just kidding i don't yeah we had about uh, half a million pounds um last weekend and so we're all loaded up again with uh, salt and salt brine and sand and in some chemicals that can uh, work to uh, dissolve some ice the snow um on roads is a little less troublesome to us than ice, unless there's just so much snow like you'd see up north in Buffalo. But um, <clears throat> but we can e more easily push snow off the road uh, than we can deal with uh, the ice. But we have been pre-treating roads um, uh, in the Midlands and in the, along the coast um, to try to ward off the ice as best as possible. Um, at this point, we're anticipating uh, a greater problem with uh, ice um, in the PD in the Grand Strand than perhaps we are in the Midlands, but that forecast, you know, continues to wobble a little bit. So we're 24-7 with all of our crews, 12-hour shifts each, uh, each person, um, pre-treating interstates, primaries, and then we get to the secondaries after that. Um, and uh, we're just uh, trying to, we're hoping for the best, but uh, planning for the worst. Um, we got 2,600 employees across the state uh, who are dedicated to our response and even moving some crews from uh, other parts of the state that are not going to be as hard hit to uh, those uh, hot spots, if you will, or cold spots. Uh, but, uh, but at any rate, um, yeah, uh, it's uh, kind of the second weekend in a row. Uh, but uh, we're hanging in there and uh, trying to keep the roads clear uh, as, as possible. I don't know that the 
uh, supply chain issues that you mentioned earlier, Carl, are because of South Carolina roads, but perhaps other parts in the country yeah, trying yeah, to yeah. get to the state. Yeah. Uh, so, agree, yeah. so at any rate, um, <clears throat> uh, we're blessed that we're not um, in uh, in the far northeast um, or upper Midwest um, and can often deal with this kind of circumstance. But but we are in emergency response mode here. Yeah. Well, thanks for uh, for everybody at DOT for. Uh, working and trying to keep us safe. We appreciate it. And it was a smart call because of the weather conditions for schools. Uh, Dr. Witherspoon, good morning. Good to see you. Uh, smart call. I know uh, I know most kids don't want to stay at home. They want to be in school when snow comes down, but that was a good call. Appreciate it. Yeah, we have to, and I appreciate um, Ms. Creech and, and, and city and county folks we met and um, virtually, of course, and um, you know, kind of collaborate on on weather and road conditions, anticipation, and so forth. So you have to be cautious. Yeah, that's exactly right. Well, good call. Um, what else we got today? Anybody? Ty came back for another week. Ty Westbrook, thank you for joining us uh, two weekends in a row. We appreciate it. Um, Good morning. I tried to come off mute. Thank you, Carl. Uh, how about Tom Bogart, president of uh, Columbia College? Good morning. I, I saw you earlier, I, but uh, things going well at school. Y'all back? Sorry, I was just getting, unfortunately, some very bad news on the phone. Um, uh, we just lost someone in our community. Um, oh, but I'm so sorry. I mean, it, yeah, having spent time in the North, uh, I find this week to be fascinating. <laughs> um, uh, we closed, we, you know, we're closed today. I'm in the office, but appropriately dressed for the snow day. The students are back. It's a, it's a good semester. And, uh, you know, just, just plugging away. The, our, our COVID numbers are higher than they've ever been, but they're still low enough that we're able to maintain in person. So higher than I've ever been. We were in the 30s this week, wow. which for us is a big number. Our biggest number before had been 17, and we were at zero for most of the end of last semester. But again, even and we're small, but you know, 30 something is still you know basically that in most classes that might be one person, and we can navigate that. Yeah, I, I, it it was rare that I didn't talk to somebody on the phone this week that was sitting at home with COVID. It was kind of crazy the, the the true numbers so um all right what else is going on hey carl it's adam um sort hey, of debbie down debbie downer uh donnie downer on the covid side so we're on the event front we're losing uh, our, our large annual nonprofit galas again uh, so it's like deja vu three times over um they can't get sponsorship support because of what's going on and uh, ultimately just can't help pay for the event, even with a lot of us vendors that always kind of do some in-kind stuff. But uh, so the venues are losing, the the hotels, my hotel friends, uh, you know, all those rooms are getting just canceled. And um, I, I just feel like I'm in this uh, this dream. Our commercial installation side is is rolling right along. And and uh, we always say if nobody's in the office, that's a great time for us to come in and put in your, your video conferencing. But it just it just seems never ending. And it, it just uh, to be blunt, it's frustrating for people like us because you just you just watch tens of thousands of dollars evaporate. And then those those organizations that so desperately need those galas and to, to have the fundraisers are, aren't having them. So anyway, right now we're kind of in 2020. I hate to say it. Yeah, the good news is, uh, and I, I feel you on that one. We, we're experiencing the same things. I, I, hopefully, we're on that backside, and, and uh, I think in the next couple of weeks, we're going to see a good rebound. I hope. Uh, fingers crossed on that. Yeah, and uh, then one more note, Carl, and just another shameless plug. Even though the state of the state might put you to sleep, I just want to make sure you heard everything okay. Because I heard it. It was per the sound was perfect. Uh, awesome. Yeah, we were fortunate enough to be a part of the team to put in that whole system about five years ago. 
So uh, as long as you could hear it, put you to sleep. That's all I care about. Yeah, it was fine. That it was not. Uh, I shouldn't have said it put me to sleep. I enjoyed seeing pe people in the room I hadn't seen in a while. So I mean, I didn't go. I, I watched it, but I, it, it was fun. All right, somebody dig me out of this hole. If you're looking for something to do this weekend, we got NFL football. NFL. I did watch a few games. It was great football last weekend. La last weekend, uh, set huge, huge numbers. Huge <laughs> numbers. Ted, who are you pulling for? That'll be the Packers. Thank you very much. All right. <laughs> Good. Um, all right. Anybody else? I can call on somebody if you want me to. Or Let me look through here. Adam Jones, good morning. Good morning. How are you? How's everything? Everything's good. I got no complaints and nothing to add. Just in, enjoying coffee with Carl. Y'all all need to get a life. Uh, listen, um, all right, let's talk about, this was a strange fact. To, to, today in history, I'll leave you on that, um, was the first commercial flight of the Concorde back in 1976. And it flew for 20 three years, I guess, till 2003. But it really is amazing, isn't it, that uh, it was cost. But there really hadn't been a ton of progress over the last uh, 15 years on getting us back to something similar. I know there are things on the horizon. They're trying to find more efficient engines. But uh, I do find it funny that we that's the only thing we've ever slowed down with, right? I mean, everything else is sped up. A phone speeds up 25% every year, but air travel is still stuck in uh, 1970s. But anyway, that's a diatribe for another day. Uh, but I will end on, let me tell you, I've already played Meatloaf two albums this morning. So uh, RIP uh, to Meatloaf, what a great act there. So um, 2022 is starting off crazy, uh, not, not kind. Anyway, well, listen, I really appreciate y'all being with us today. Um, I hope y'all stay safe and uh, plenty of hot chocolate and whatever you need to watch football games this weekend. Enjoy it. Uh, do not go out and drive after all, and all this ice until it melts tomorrow. Be, y'all be safe so y'all can join us here next Friday. Again, we're on location with Adam next week, so don't uh, – don't drop out. We're, tune in next week. We're, we're on for an adventure. So, um, all right. Y'all be good. And uh, thanks for joining. We'll see you real soon.